Hi guys, welcome back. It's Don Wazzy here. And today I'm going to be showing you my Veteran Maelstrom Arena build for the Magicka Nightblade for the Clockwork City patch. So, little disclaimer, I just want to say that my builds aren't really for like top score runs or anything like that. They are strictly to get through the instance as easy as possible. So, obviously there's some things you could change on my build to make it more suitable for you or to make it a bit better but this is just what works for me so that's why i'm sharing it so maybe it work it might work for you or you might have to ch change it up so like a tiny little bit or something like that but i just thought i'd share my build anyway as i'm not the best magic and night blade in the world but i have started playing the class and i find it fun so that's why i play it a lot more now so without further ado, we're going to go through with the um, fully buff stats. So we have 47.6k Magicka, 17.5k Health, 12.8k Stamina, 2527 Spell Damage, 57.2% Spell Crit, and 1167 Magicka Recovery. We have all attributes into Magicka. We are running by stat blue food. The Mundus we are running is the lo the lover. We are a vampire. Um, you can have it between. You can have this stage four if you want, because we are a dark elf, so it cancels out the extra damage you get from being a vampire, plus CP points as well. So that's entirely up to you. The only reason I have it at stage one now is because I were raiding with the with this class earlier on. So, that's why I have that. Now we're going to get into the gear. We have five Julianos uh, on the front bar. So we have an Inferno staff, an infused, inf infused Inferno staff uh, with a shock damage glyph. And on the back bar, you can you can run two infused Julianos staffs, one infused on the front bar and one Nern Horned on the back bar. The reason I have the Maelstrom staff is because I have it, so I might as well use it and make it easier for me. Uh, ideally, this would be Nern Horned, but I only had Infused in Inferno, so that's the reason I took Infused. Um, we are running 5-piece Julianus on the front bar, that's with the stave, so we have that on as helmet, uh, chest, belt, gloves. And we are running a one piece Dommy House, which is for the max stamina and max magicka. We are running the 5 1 1 setup, so ideally you would have a heavy Julianos chest and heavy Julianos legs and a light Dommy House. But this is just what I had crafted and what I had in my bank, so I went with this. It's not much of a difference, but it makes a small difference. So we're running 5 piece Julianos and five piece destruction mastery which if you don't know where this set is from it's from vet dragon star arena or normal dragon star arena it comes in jewelry um jewelry gear and uh weapons uh, everything is divines except from the legs because that's all i had so I put, I put a triglyph on there to give me some more health um other than that everything's got max magicka enchantments and we are running three de destruction mastery jewelry, which we have two spell damage enchantments and one magicka recovery enchantment. Uh, it's entirely up to you. I was new. T this was my first ever run that I got because I got flawless on my first ever run, and this because this was my first ever run, I put one magic recovery glyph on just in case, just because obviously more sustain, more su more survivability because you can use your shields more, so. Uh, if you if you're very comfortable with sustain on the magic and nightblade then I would run all three spell damage uh, basically the reason we're using destruction mastery is because it gives you a massive amount of magicka without having to use a skill to to get it so we are on 47,000 magicka with destruction mastery there are better sets that you can use that do more DPS this just um, provides you with bigger shields and uh, bigger heals etc so that's why I use the five piece destruction mastery also it's 
this setup is very easy to get obviously aside from the maelstrom inferno stuff um dommy house comes from the undaunted chests the dlc chest julianus is craftable and destruction mastery is extremely cheap because no one rates the set so that's why i went with that obviously the food we're using is by stat food because the magic and in the magic and night blades kit it has a lot it, it has a lot of um sustain so you can have less magicka recovery than the rest of the classes so that's why i choose the buy stat food just to get extra health and extra magicka and the potions we are using are essence of spell power um i i've got the one with three components so major intellect major prophecy and major sorcery but you do not need the major prophecy on this build because we're double barring in a light which already gives you that so you can take that component out of the potion and just have major sorcery and major intellect so that's entirely up to you it just makes it a bit cheaper so without further ado i'm going to go to the skills and on the front bar we have impale which is our execute we have funnel health which when i'm in maelstrom i take swallow soul it's the other morph the only reason i've got funnel health on now is because i was in a trial and funnel health provides more group utility but you can still get through maelstrom with funnel health i just prefer the extra heals of swallow soul when i'm running maelstrom the next one is harness magicka this is our shield and you need five pieces of light armor to be able to use this shield um it also returns magicka back when you absorb spell damage um, when, yeah when sp spell damage is absorbed so that's also a bit more sustained for you we have merciless resolve which it grants it grants you minor berserk so it increases your damage done by eight percent for 20 seconds so make sure you keep this up if you can s see the buff tracker at the bottom make sure you're keeping that up the whole time like make sure it's up like the whole time because it gives you 8% more damage. Um, Night Blades are the only ones that can effectively really use this. Um, and then after five light attacks or heavy attacks, uh, you get uh, Assassin's Will proc, which does a massive amount of damage. So I keep, I'd keep track of that skill. I have, because I'm new to the Mage Blade, um, I have real problems keeping track of the skill. So I, I miss i miss the props sometime but as soon as you get used to it um the mage blade's very powerful for burst so just make sure you're keeping track and just remember that it's either five light attacks or and just remember that heavy attacks count as two light attacks so if you heavy attack and then do three light attacks then that's that counts as five so then you get the proc so just yeah just be ready to keep track of that the next skill on our bar is Inner Light. 5% um, more max magicka while slotted. And grants you major prophecy. And the ultimate on our bar is Fiery Rage. The Destro ulti. And the reason we have this on the front bar is because because of the Destruction Staff passive. Uh, I think it's Ancient, yeah, ancient Knowledge. You need to have a you need to have a destruction staff ability slotted on both bars. So on the front bar I have fiery rage, on the back bar I have blockade of fire. Um, just to get the bonuses from that passive. You could, if you wanted to, put blockade on the front bar where the shield is, and put the shield on the back bar and the destial on the back bar, and put soul harvest on the front bar for more ulti gen. But I found this way easier for me and um i rather have my dots on the back bar and my maelstrom staff on the back bar anyway so that's entirely up to you if you're running two juliana staves then you might as well put blockade on the front bar and the um death steel on the back bar and then just put soul harvest on the front bar because you just generate so much ultimate um night blades are di disgusting at generating ultimate you can you can basically get an ultimate every round uh, if if done properly so keep
keep that in mind it's just personal preference and entirely up to you plus i like my shield being on my front bar because I, I feel a bit more safer with my shield on my front bar so on our back bar we have obviously a blockade of fire refreshing path this is the heal morph make sure this is always up because there is a passive in the shadow skill line i think it is yeah shadow shadow barrier casting a shadow abil ability grants you major resolve and major ward for six seconds increasing your physical and spell resistance by 5280 the duration is increased by 25 percent for each piece of heavy armor equipped so our current bonus is 25 percent because obviously we have one piece of heavy armor so effectively you want to keep that up as much as possible because it, you, it, it gives you some minor healing it also gives you major expedition and it gives you major resolve and major ward uh, the next one next skill on our bar is crippling grasp and this also gives you major expedition and it's a really strong dot but the problem with it is it also costs a lot of magicka so i only really use this on bosses or like when i want to rip an ad down really fast so other than that i just use blockade and refreshing path and then obviously spam force pulse not force pulse um swallowing swallow soul light weave etc the next skill on our bar is siphoning attacks i'm sure most people know what this is it is our main source of sustain uh, basically your light attacks and heavy attacks heal you for 1539 and restore 106 magicka for 20 seconds but also if you let the duration go the full the full um length of time you restore 4270 magicka that's why we don't need as much magicka recovery so and the next skill on our bar is in a light again because i like to double slot it keep the max magicka consistent on both bars and then the ultimate on our back bar is soul harvest this is strictly for sometimes you're on your back bar when an enemy dies so you get ultimate back from that but this is more to have a, an assassination ability on our back bar so now i'm going to go over passives so you can skip over this part if you want um, i'm just going to quickly brush over passives so here we go first you're going to want all the assassination passives all the shadow passives all the siphoning passives all the destruction staff passives all the light armor passives you're going to want wind walker passive which gives you increases your stamina recovery stamina recovery is always good in maelstrom arena because of um, cc breaks blocks roll dodge you're going to want the first three passives in heavy armor so that's resolve constitution and juggernaut juggernaut gives you more max health resolve gives you minor resistances and um, constitution gives you a bit of health recovery and also a bit of sustain when you get hit um you're gonna want the vampire passive supernatural recovery undeath and unnatural resistance you're gonna want banish the wicked from the fighters guild all the mages guild passives um, both of the undaunted passives all the dark health passives or your class passives whichever class you are and the, um, the medicinal use passive from alchemy uh, that's a big deal so yeah so now i'm going to go over the champion points and i can't remember if i reset these from the trial yeah i did so first of all you're going to want 51 points in elfborn 56 points in elemental expert and 26 points in spell erosion six points in staff expert 51 points in master at arms and 40 points into thermiturge 61 points in ironclad 8 points in spell shield 56 in hard air and elemental defender and 40 in thick skinned 9 in expert defender just for maelstrom when you get light or heavy attacks just to stop from stop you from getting bursted really early uh, you also want 28 in warlord 19 in sprinter and 9 in bash in fo bash focus the reason I take more, the reason I put less in Warlord and a bit in Sprinter is because I do like to sprint a lot in Maelstrom, and it causes me to lose stamina like quite a lot of the time. 
So that extra 12% reduction helps a lot. Um, we have 7 in Mooncalf, 64 in Tenacity, 75 in Arcanist, and 28 in Tumbling. So that is the champion points. So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to go in Maelstrom Arena. Well, I'm going to put my food on. So now I'm going to go do the first round of Maelstrom Arena and just uh, have a little bit of a talk through and tell you what I do when I'm in there. So without further ado, let's just go straight in. Right, so now we're in Maelstrom Arena. Um, before the round starts, I like to get my potion going, buff up, and then be ready to place my dots. Charge up a heavy. Funnel, funnel, and then execute this guy. Put my dots back down, same again. Charge up a heavy. I, sh um, I should be executing at this point, but big guy's coming out, so I'll stick a Destro on him. Give him a few dots, right, and let him burn while dealing with the rest. Just try execute as much as possible. This summer I really forget, and I also forget my Merciless Resolve as well. So make sure you try to keep that up. So same again, I like to stand here because the boss is going to spawn here. Charge up a heavy, get this guy, make sure your potion's still going. Stay near your dots though, so they don't move out too much. So he's, he's still getting hit up by them dots. And make sure you keep your siphoning attacks up. I overcast it, but overcasting's better than not having it up. When does the real fight start? Sometimes I tend to use my execute a bit too much. But you get the gist, it's the healing and the big shields that we've got. So try buff up before every round, get your dots down. As you can see, my DPS is not that good, but I still got flawless, so... There you go, we have an Assassin's Will proc, so I'll smash that off straight away. This clan fee is going to cause me problems, so... I'm going to just execute for the win. Get your dots back down. Uh, kind of messed up with my skills then. I get him executed, and now we're on the boss fight. The reason I stand here is just because the boss is literally going to spawn next to us. Get so get your Destiny ult down straight away. Get your dots going. You come forth, my other self. And then just spam him for the win. And then back on him. Use your soul harvest here. To get some extra burn damage. And then just... Spam your execute for the win. As, as you can see, I'm not the best mage blade. I've got a lot to work on. But if you could tell, I wasn't getting barely any damage. My sustain was absolutely wonderful. Uh, I didn't have to worry about it whatsoever. And also, if you like the mage blade content, um, please le leave a comment. Uh, let me know in the yeah. Let me know in the comments. Share the content. Like. Subscribe. And if you want to see more Mage Blade content, just let me know. Uh, also, uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't joined my Facebook or Twitter, um, uh, the link will be in the description. Also, the link for my Discord channel, if, you, if you're not on there yet. I'm trying to build like a small community on Discord. I have, um, I have different channels which like uh, PVE discussions like theory crafting sorcerer uh, warden Templar Dragon Knight uh, and just a general chat so if anyone wants to just talk to me like directly uh, hit me up on discord the link will be in the description and um, if uh, if you have any questions about the build that I've missed 
just please let me know in the comments and thank you for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching guys bye